Welcome to Four Culture, exploring the richness of culture in our community through arts, heritage, preservation, and public art. Seattle is known as one of the great boating cities in the world. How did that come about? Well, a big part of it was the creation of the Lake Washington Ship Canal back in 1917, which allowed for easy navigation between our lakes and Puget Sound. The canal and the locks were originally designed for cargo ships and commercial vessels, but in the long run, they ended up getting used a lot more by people who just want to get out and enjoy the water and all the sports and recreational activities you can do on the water. I'm Vaughn Raymond, and I've been producing a series of documentary films for the centennial of the locks and the canal. During this project, I've had the opportunity to get out on the water myself with the Seattle Yacht Club, the UW Rowing Team, and other folks to tell the story of what a special place for recreational boating our city really is. If you spend a few hours here at the Hiram M. Chinton Locks and Ballard, you have a great chance of seeing anything from a huge ship to a tiny kayak lock through. It's always impressive to see the huge ships, but it's really the small boats that make this the busiest lock in the nation, with nearly 50,000 boats locking through each year. By giving vessels access to freshwater mooring, the locks have helped make Seattle a mecca for recreational boating. I'm Katie McGilvery, I work for the Army Corps of Engineers, and we built the locks in the Lake Washington Ship Canal 100 years ago, and we still run them today. For our centennial, we teamed up with local organizations to tell stories about our history, including this one, about how the Ship Canal helps Seattleites have fun on the water. It's almost difficult to convey how different the Lake Washington Ship Canal was in its early years compared to what it is today. It started as an industrial place. Boat building, boat maintenance, sawmills, fish processing. I had this envision of people elbowing their way for some shoreline space because it was so crowded with industry. That's not the experience you have today if you go along the ship canal. It didn't take long before people were arguing that part of the space along the ship canal should be for people to enjoy the water. Seattle Garden Club proposed that if they could beautify the canal, then people in their pleasure boats would come through, and if it was a more enjoyable experience, they would be more likely to come back. And it worked. I mean, that is definitely one of the things that Seattle and the Ship Canal are known for, is that it is a beautiful place to ride your boat through. Initially, the goal of the Ship Canal was industrial and bringing in jobs. But then you start to see people use it for recreational use. And these slowly grow over time to now recreational boating, at least from the number of boats, dwarfs the number of boats going through for other purposes. And that, I think, was one of the unexpected aspects of the canal. But I think for most of us, it's maybe the most important aspect, and it's what allows the canal to unite the city in many ways. Before 1900, if you wanted to be a yachtsman in Seattle, it was not an easy thing to do. It was a recreational activity that cost a significant amount of money, and it was done by just a few people. They were intrepid men and women who did that, and so it was a lot different than what we see today. You really had to be interested in it. And the Seattle Yacht Club started 125 years ago in Elliott Bay, because that's where you could boat. Prior to building the locks, the club was out in Elliott Bay in uh, about four different locations, and later over in West Seattle. If you read some of the old literature about the club locations out on Elliott Bay, and every time a good, strong southwester came through and tore up the docks and ripped up the boating out there, the boats were on moorings off of the yacht club. There really wasn't room for docks. The clubhouses were small, fragile. 
But after they opened the locks, the club could build a permanent location that could stand the test of time. And of course, you have fresh water, which is much friendlier for, uh, for boats and boat bottoms. And the club flourished in its own new location. So when they opened the ship canal, it was obviously dramatic. It brought commerce to the freshwater side of Seattle. And it also allowed recreational boaters to move their private yachts from Elliott Bay into the lake so that they could transit from the lake to the Puget Sound. And when the locks were first open, they had a parade that started on the saltwater side, came up to the freshwater side. And since then, we've had boat parades on an annual basis, even through the war years. And it's gotten bigger and bigger every year and it's a lot of fun to participate. The first opening day was the opening of the locks back in 1917, which was commemorated by a large spectacle of boats going down the cut. Today we're proud to say that Seattle Yacht Club carries on that tradition. And every first Saturday in May, we open up our home to the entire city and proudly parade through that cut. Now, opening day, while it's sponsored by the Yacht Club and supported by the Yacht Club, it's not a Yacht Club event. It's a city event, and it's the largest city event in Seattle. In fact, if you look around, the largest boating event in the world. Crew races are a wonderful integral part of our opening day weekend. We've had, I don't know how many, you know, we've had Cambridge, Oxford, um, Crews from all over the world come and race. And this year, it's China. So this is going to be extraordinary to watch. The crew races that we have now for the Windermere Cup are the largest viewed crew races in the world. And the crews that come from the visiting schools and country really enjoy participating because they've not had as many people watch as they do here and it encourages them to do their best effort and it's uh, truly the best one on the whole circuit. The Windermere Cup really is where many of us rowers start our journey. For me when I was a little uh, novice rower, um, the first time I had ever seen rowing was through the Montlake Cut during the Windermere Cup. The Washington rowing team really has been using the Montlake Cut and the Ship Canal ever since it was first established. So you've probably seen these incredibly historic pictures of the Coffer Dam being torn down and the water rushing through and filling up the Montlake Cut. Um, I'm sure there are many UW rowers standing and watching this whole spectacle take place and thinking, you know, let's get out there tomorrow, let's see what we can do as a team on this new waterway and let's see uh, what sort of incredible things we can do from the protected water of the Montlake Cut. And that's exactly what they did. They started training there right away and they haven't stopped for over a hundred years. It's been huge. We're talking boys of the boat huge. We're talking dozens of Olympic gold medals. We're talking legacies of Olympic rowers that all had their beginnings at the University of Washington. And it is because of the Montlake Cut and the Ship Canal that Seattle is internationally regarded as a beautiful venue for rowing. I've never been a rower myself, but I sure appreciate those people who get up at five in the morning, practice, 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 get out there for a race, and then, 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 then it all happens in a matter of three, four, five minutes. Crew Races has grown to become a big, integral part of Seattle, and boating has a really big place in Seattle, unique almost in cities around the country, thanks to Hiram Chittenden and Blocks. The Army Corps of Engineers are responsible for maintaining the Hiram Chittenden locks, and we hope that they continue to do as fine a job in the next hundred years that they've done this past hundred years. I can't say enough for the Army Corps of Engineers for developing this extraordinary canal, and we are so fortunate in this wonderful area to have this because it's a great playground not just for crew, but for boaters of all types, and we love it. As a child, I remember leaving the Seattle Yacht Club to go on our adventures up to Desolation Sound, and it was always such excitement to go under that first bridge to know that we were embarking on a great adventure this summer. 
getting in the locks and being able to tell the men that were helping us, thank them profusely for helping to start our vacation. And on our way home, that same feeling, but recalling everything we've done for that week or two or three that we were out investigating, and that long run down the cut again to get back to our berth in port. Memories are something that builds family and builds community. And the Seattle area has developed an entire huge community around boating, whether you're a boater or not. We are all so lucky to live here, and we all have a debt of thanks to the Army Corps of Engineers for making it possible for us. Without the cuts and that integral system that we have to get us from one waterway to another, none of this would be possible.